We do have Jacob Bleacher with NASA. He is the chief exploration scientist. Thank you so much for being here to talk all about Artemis. We appreciate it. Yeah, glad to be here. It's really exciting times right now. Of course, very exciting. So tell me where things stand for tomorrow's launch. I know we're a little bit more than 24 hours away and we're hoping no mechanical issues, no weather issues. Tell me how it's going. Yeah, I mean, we're looking good for tomorrow right now, pending the weather, uh, which is also looking fairly decent. Uh, you know, we, we ran into a few little um, uh, issues as we were getting ready uh, in the prior attempt. Uh, I think we have a pretty good understanding of those. A few leaks, we had to replace a couple hoses, tighten a few bolts, um, and we have a better understanding of, uh, of, of kind of the countdown now. So I think we made a few adjustments, and uh, as of now, we're ready to go. And just kind of for people who knew that it was scrub but didn't know the exact reason, kind of explain why it had to be postponed until Saturday and also why Friday, which was the backup day today, isn't being used either. Well, the um, so what we ran into were a, a few snags on some of the leaks, but those are kind of expected. Uh, but you have to remember that we were already one hour behind schedule because of weather. Uh, so we were kind of working under a compressed time schedule as we were working through a few of these things. And then the issue that, that we really couldn't get out of was um, we weren't sure if one of the main RS-25 engines uh, was actually cooling down or not. So one of our sensors was indicating that it was not cooling down in what we call a bleed test. Uh, we like to condition the engines so that they're, uh, they're cooled off and ready when we set them off uh, for launch. And because we weren't certain and we were already on our compressed time schedule, we were, you know, we just couldn't work through that. Um, but again, we've worked through that over the last few days, um, you know, and, and so we have these opportunities lined up here and, uh, you know, working through the data, getting our, ourselves in position, kind of changing some of our protocols. Saturday is the good day for us to take another attempt at this. Well, and what's interesting is we're talking about the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. So a lot of people came out Monday. I think the number was 100,000 people. It's likely that we're going to see even more tomorrow, right? Because we're talking about Labor Day weekend. Sure as possible. I mean, it, you know, you got a long weekend and an exciting launch. So why not put those together and, uh, and come come on a trip down here to uh, Cape Canaveral and take a look? It's definitely exciting. I mean, the, the air around here is just kind of, you know, it's really hard to describe how it feels right now. And, and I think the support that we're feeling, you know, locally here in the United States, but also worldwide, it's, it's a good feeling right now. So we're ready to go. And that's another question here is how are you personally feeling? I know everyone's excited, but tell me how you're feeling now as we near this launch date. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, I've never felt anything quite like this. You know, th this is all but overwhelming, um, but we're doing a job, right? All of us are working here, trying to, to get to the, to the common point. I think when we do actually get this thing off the ground, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how we all respond to it. But, um, you know, it's, for me, it's been fun. I, I like to walk over to the launch pad at, at night or uh, if I get a break during the day and just watching our workforce kind of come up and, uh, and you know, say their goodbyes to, uh, to the vehicles kind of, you know, I don't know. It's really hard to describe this, this feeling. Yeah, you kind of grow close to them here. But how does the Artemis program actually differ from the Apollo? How is this all different? I know obviously we're talking decades later, but how does it differ from Apollo? Yeah, you know, I think the words you used in the beginning were, were kind of turning a new chapter here. Um, and, you know, chapters are part of a book, and we're really talking about the book of exploration here. So Apollo was an early chapter. Uh, we learned about going to the moon. We landed near the equator on the near side of the moon. So we learned a lot about getting to the moon, spending a little bit of time there and coming back. Since then, we've learned about living in space in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station, the shuttle. Uh, we've also conducted a number of science missions to the moon, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, for instance. All of the information we've learned from exploration and science in the last 50 years puts us in a position for Artemis to, uh, to fly Artemis 1 and learn about our vehicle, and that will put us in a, in a spot where we can land astronauts in Artemis 3 at the South Pole. And that's, that's kind of a new place for us, and we think there's water there, which makes it a really exciting destination for us. Yeah, so the question is, how long until we're able to go to Mars, and can I, I guess, get on the ship? Yeah, you know, that, that chapter analogy again, you know, that's another chapter we're looking forward to. Uh, we have a lot to learn, just like we learned from the, the Apollo missions and, and shuttle and the International Space Station. We're going to learn through Artemis. We're going to learn how to explore the moon. 
spend more time on the moon. We're basically writing the blueprint for solar system exploration at this point, and that will lead eventually to Mars as well. Um, and right now we're looking in the late 2030s for that. Gotcha, gotcha. A lot of people are definitely anticipating that. And you kind of mentioned this, but when could we actually see humans go back to the moon? Because we have talked about, you know, we do see this unmanned craft that is going past the moon. But as far as people actually going there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Artemis One, we're, we're testing out this hardware uh, to make sure we can fly with astronauts. That will lead to Artemis Two, uh, which will be another uh, fly, flight around the moon, but with our astronauts. Uh, and that, that all puts us in a position for Artemis Three, which is the touchdown in the South Polar region. So we're targeting kind of late in 2025 for that mission. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Jacob Bleacher with NASA. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us here and talk to us on the program, especially about something that we are super excited about here. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. I hope you get a good view of it, uh, view of it tomorrow. I mean, I'm going to be running outside, so I hope so. Thank you again.